Hi, my name is Ari, and today I'll be talking about the possibility of a solar-dependent future and why we as individuals should be more open to the use of solar energy. Now, before I start off, did any of you know that an hour of the sun's energy that reaches the surface of this planet is equivalent to the total annual energy consumption of the whole world? That fact alone has inspired me since I was young that such an abundant source of clean and renewable energy is right on our doorstep, waiting to be harnessed. It's also very interesting to look back to our history and see how humans discovered new forms of energy. We started off with burning wood to make campfires, then proceeded to hunt whales to, for their oils to light illuminant lamps at home. Soon after, we discovered oil and coal underground to power our steam engines. But yet, during those centuries, we haven't realized the potential of the sun's energy, or at least haven't managed to capture such energy. Another thing that fascinated me greatly was plants and how they photosynthesize to grow. Many people see this picture as an ordinary rainforest, but I see it as a civilization, a very prosperous civilization with its own inhabitants who all depend on the energy from the sun. And what's even more spectacular is that these civilizations have prospered all throughout the world from the very beginning of time. The question that arises from this is, if such a massive civilization could flourish for millions of years using the energy from the sun, why can't we do the same thing? The world's economies today are growing rapidly, but the nature of that growth itself is quite unhealthy and unsustainable due to the pollutions we emit. Now that we have a more advanced technology, why not transition fully to the use of solar energy? I am glad, though, to say that the world today is showing clear signs of shifting towards a more solar-focused energy source. And it is even speculated that by 2050, 38% of the total power generated will come from solar. Now, most solar panels of today are made from silicon, which is one of the most abundant elements on Earth. This makes the mass production of solar panels possible. And as technology improves, these productions could be more cost efficient and allows it to be produced and sold at a very affordable price. In fact, the cost of a solar module was around $100 per watt in the 1970s, adjusted to inflation. And it dropped significantly to only a dollar per watt in, on this day. This trend may suggest that solar energy may one day be cheaper and more efficient to produce than any other energy source. Now, let's not only talk about the good things. There are some limitations of using solar panels, but let's also explore potential solutions to overcome it as well. The first major disadvantage uh, that many people would immediately say is it costs too much. And I don't blame them, because despite the massive drop in the price of solar, solar modules, its initial cost is still indeed very high, uh, around about fifteen to $20,000, depending on the type of solar panel. The rapid technological growth should, however, reduce these costs in the future and hopefully it would be more affordable for everyone. Sorry. Secondly, solar panels are inconsistent. They depend significantly on weather conditions and work best on sunny days. They also do not work at night, the time where we need them the most. This is very true. Some regions in the world receive more sunlight than others, and um, some regions are always cl almost cloudy, and hence solar panels don't work as well in those places. However, with the availability of batteries, uh, which could store solar energy, the energy received from sunny days could be used for times where the sun isn't as bright. Maybe in the future, countries could come up with a, an agreement to fund the building of a huge solar power plant somewhere where sunlight is very intense, like the Sahara Desert, and share the energy equally. This will allow countries which receive small amounts of sunlight to receive equally as much energy. The efficiency of solar cells is also another major challenge. Most commercial solar panels convert only around about 20% of the light's energy into electrical energy. The most efficient solar cell today has an efficiency of around 40%. As for this issue, let's just hope that the growth of technology will take care of this one. Let's now move towards the creative innovations, uh, from small things such as solar chargers to floating solar farms that could potentially shape the future of solar energy in this planet. So here it is, a solar-powered battery pack. You can charge it at daytime and charge your phones uh, simultaneously or at night. 
But I guess I figured out that it's quite odd seeing uh, people walking around with a battery pack on their hand pointing up at the sun, so they came up with a um, solar backpack covering a larger surface area uh, and containing its own battery pack inside so you can charge it as well. Some countries even provide charging stations known as the strawberry tree uh, with solar panels on top. There's also the more commonly known solar street lights, which are widely used by many countries. These are very cost efficient and very effective. Smaller versions of those are solar lamps used at home. You can place it next to your window uh, during the day and let it recharge or, and use it if you need to at night. Solar vehicles are also gaining popularity. In 2009, the first solar powered piloted aircraft uh, took off into the air. Other vehicles such as um, electric boats, solar powered cars and trains are also gaining reputation quite rapidly. Who knows, maybe in the future, uh, planes, cars and other vehicles will run fully on solar energy. Another big product made by Tesla uh, was a, is a solar roof. This isn't the usual solar panel attached to the roof. This one is an actual roof, roof tile, uh, which blends in and makes it hidden, but functions in the same way as a solar panel. It is also said to have a lower cost than a normal roof if you consider the electricity bill as well. So as you can see, there are so many different varieties and uses of solar energy. But the question still remains, can the world run fully using the energy from the sun? It's pretty safe to say that the world today is running out of fossil fuels and that we need to find an alternative, alternative energy as soon as possible. Many countries have already been pushing hard to achieve this goal. Portugal has proved that it is indeed possible to run entirely out of, uh, out of renewable energy for four days in May 2016, uh, in which the country was powered only by the wind, sun, and ocean waves. China is also rapidly shifting towards solar energy and plan to triple its solar capacity by 2020. While answering this question, we cannot avoid a very important fact, that around 1.2 billion people in developing countries do not have access to electricity. Most of these developing countries are also near the equator, where the sun is very intense, and solar panels may just be the solution to this issue. Of course, to power the whole world, it would need a great deal of funding as well as land area. But even with the various limitations, it would actually still be very possible to, to power the entire world with our current solar technology. An estimate for the land area needed to achieve this goal is approximately 500,000 square kilometers, which is around about the size of Spain. It may sound like a lot, but if each country takes a bit of their own land for a solar, solar power plant, it would actually still be very possible. Anyways, this optimistic idea may take a century, maybe two, or maybe more. But the growth of technology has proven that it is, that it is making it is possible to make solar panels cheaper, better, and more efficient. I believe that solar panels will become more and more appealing to the world's population. And at one point, the whole world will realize the importance of solar energy. And as fossil fuels are rapidly depleting, solar will take its part as a fuel to the world's economic engines. Thank you.